Dr. Chris, and today I'm reacting to the recent injury of YouTube baller The Professor and his potentially career ending injury. Sometimes the step back is just not good for your health. Global Hooper founder, The Professor, international basketball entertainer, and his recent ankle injury in a 2v2 ball game are going to help us understand why. Hey everybody, Dr. Chris, orthopedic surgeon and sports medicine physician. If you are here because you recently subscribed to my channel, then thank you for becoming part of the Intern Army. Welcome to my channel, where I explain orthopedic injuries and sports medicine in a way that's easy to understand for everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? Sorry about that one. So today, I am reacting to a video that was on my feed the other day on the YouTube homepage. While I don't always watch a lot of basketball day to day, I do watch The Professor from time to time as he travels around the world regularly breaking ankles and making people look clumsy on the interwebs. I was intrigued by his recent post about a potentially career ending injury and you know me. If it has to do with orthopedic injuries or sports medicine, then I am in. In this video, the professor was hanging out on a business trip in Miami, Miami with his boy, Zach. Zach. As is his habit, he checked out the local spots to see where the locals were playing basketball. After calling around, he located a court close by his hotel and he headed out to hoop it up. The professor and Zach played against the locals in several games. The first game was to a score of seven. In fairly short order, the professor did what he usually does and he finished the game quickly, breaking the maximum number of ankles possible during the process. The second game was to a score of 11. Here, the local challengers were able to perform much better as the game was much more evenly contested. The game continued on with the challengers in the lead with a three point differential to a score of six to nine in favor of the challengers. The professor and Zach were able to tie the score at nine nine. Then while driving to the hoop, the professor took a step and he went down in a heap. He laid on the ground for a while before telling his crew that he could not possibly take a step on his injured leg and that he is not even sure what happened. Someone called 911 and after a moment, his boys helped him up and carried him over to the ambulance as it arrived. The professor was taken to the hospital where he was assessed by the attending physician. At the time of this video, the professor has not put out any additional information addressing his injury. So that's why Dr. Chris is here to help you out. Okay. So how did the professor's injury occur? What is the injury that he suffered? How will his injury be treated? Is it in fact a career ending injury? And what happens next for the professor? In the second game, we have a clue as to the injury that the professor suffered. After driving to the hoop to bring the score to seven to nine in favor of the challengers, we can see that the professor lands on the foot of one of the challengers with his right foot. This forces the professor's right ankle into slight dorsiflexion. We can see that the professor tweaks something here as he takes a slight hop and momentarily grimaces. But he is able to play it off and he quickly returns to the game. He shows no sign of a problem as he scores another two points to even the score in the game. Then on the professor's possession, he takes a back step before driving to the hoop. Unfortunately, he's got nothing. He falls to the ground, unable to push off with no idea of what happened. He grabs his ankle and he cannot figure out what is going on with his leg. So what exactly did he do to himself? The professor was injured in the exact same manner as Kevin Durant was injured during the 2020 NBA playoffs. As he stepped back to push off, he suffered an Achilles tendon injury in his right lower leg. Like Kevin Durant, the professor had suffered a minor injury to his lower extremity before he suffered the real deal. Remember when he momentarily tweaked his ankle after stepping on the challenger's foot? This is what we refer to in medicine as a prodrome or an early sign of a pending problem. This was the professor's warning. In hindsight, he should have quit while he was ahead. Well, at that point he wasn't actually ahead, but at least he should have listened to his body and called it a day. It is hard to know just from this video whether it was a complete or a partial tear of the Achilles or at what level the tear has occurred. However, this information would be obtained by a physical examination and diagnostic imaging. At the hospital, we could expect that a physical examination would reveal a positive Thompson test, 
where the absence of foot plantar flexion on calf compression in a prone patient is indicative of an Achilles tendon rupture. While the physical examination is usually sufficient to confirm the diagnosis, imaging studies such as a diagnostic ultrasound or an MRI may be used to provide additional information such as the degree of rupture, full or partial, and the exact location of the rupture, bony insertion versus a tendinous portion versus musculotendinous junction. So how will this injury be treated? An Achilles tendon rupture can be treated both non-operatively and operatively. The decision on how to treat an Achilles tendon rupture is made jointly after consultation between the patient and the surgeon. The main factors that should be considered include short and long-term functional outcome, post-operative ankle range of motion, rate of re-rupture, and the risk of complications with treatment. A 2014 meta-analysis study, or a study of other studies, looked at the results of Achilles tendon injuries in 716 patients. The study showed that the operative treatment of Achilles tendon ruptures resulted in better short-term functional outcome at three months, a similar long-term range of motion as non-operative treatment, and a decreased risk of re-rupture compared to non-operative treatment. However, Operative treatment has a potential risk of wound complications. So the decision of whether to treat this operatively will be up to the professor and his orthopedic surgeon. If he decides to treat this injury non-operatively, he will be placed in a short leg cast or cast boot with his ankle placed in plantar flexion for a period of approximately six weeks to allow the Achilles tendon to heal. Then he will begin rehabilitation to allow him to restore his ankle range of motion his lower extremity strength, and his normal gait or walking mechanics. Once this baseline function is restored, he can begin training to get back to breaking ankles. <laughs> On the other hand, if he decides to proceed with surgery, he will undergo either an open or a percutaneous repair, depending on his surgeon's preferred method of fixation. And this just means that the repair will be performed through either a formal incision centered over the portion of the Achilles that is torn, or through tiny poke holes above and below the damaged area. After surgery, he will be placed in a short leg cast or cast boot, just as with non-operative treatment. The remainder of his treatment will be the same as with non-operative treatment. For more detailed information on the surgical treatment of Achilles tendon ruptures, check out my video on the Kevin Durant injury. Pushes off of his right leg as he is driving to the hoop. Immediately after making his initial move, he kind of stumbles, he turns to walk off the court as he knows that something is wrong. I'll leave a link to that in the description down below. So do I think that this is a career ending injury for the professor? At the beginning of the professor's video, he showed a doctor stating that professional athletes who suffered this injury were not able to return to the same level of play to which they were accustomed before their injury. It's not, a, it's not something that you bounce back from, you know, the same. If you look at guys in the NBA, they'll never quite come back the same. If we look at the literature on this topic, we can see that this is not exactly true. A recent 2017 study of professional athletes who have underwent surgical repair of Achilles tendon ruptures showed that nearly one third of these athletes were unable to return to play after their injury. Those who did demonstrated significant functional deficits in their first year after they returned to play, but returned to normal play at the two year mark. NBA players failed worse than did NFL or MLB players. A 2013 study of NBA players only showed that nearly 40% of players never returned to play and that functional deficits persisted up to two years after the surgical repair. So I think that there is a good chance that the professor will be able to return to breaking ankles for oh, no. entertainment at some point in the future. He is young and assuming that he is otherwise healthy, he has good potential for healing. However, expect it to be between one to two years before he is back to his normal self on the basketball court. And finally, what does this mean for the professor moving forward? Well, only time will tell. I expect him to be off the court for some time while he allows this injury to heal and while he rehabilitates himself back into playing shape. In the meantime, I assume he will focus on making other content for your entertainment. Maybe he will work on some injury rehab content for you. If he wants an injury collab, I think that I know a guy. Okay. Either way, 
I wish the professor well on his recovery from this injury. If KD can make it back from this injury, then I think that the professor will be just fine. If you enjoy what I do and the information that I provide, then you can support what I do by either becoming a member of this channel or by checking out my Patreon page where you'll be able to access additional content and be able to interact with me more closely. YouTube does not seem to like injury videos and my videos are often demonetized. If you enjoy podcasts on the other hand and you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my new podcast channel. The link will be in the description. And if you are looking for exercises, workouts, or you want more information on injury prevention, be sure to check out our sister channel here on YouTube, Human 2.0. Thanks for watching. And as always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris, not your everyday ortho. <laughs>